Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I feel like we haven't spoken about Love Megan a little while, um, but we'd be a little tiny little bit of conversation because it's just come to my attention that her husband Justin is basically starting up his own little course. I feel like there's so many different courses going on between the pair of them. I am permanently confused. So you have like the Hickman or the something Hickman, which is basically Justin's travel Instagram thing i think he he was trying to like set himself up as like a travel advisor for a little while but now he's like running courses on it because they really enjoy traveling obviously it's all in this course so it's got some faulted opinions on it i do think that his pricing is much more reasonable than whatever meg's been doing i'm not sure why she doesn't take his advice but who knows what what i will say to this the only thing i will say before we actually get into what the hell he's offering and whatnot a lot of this kind of stuff you can literally find on youtube for free it's like when influencers start charging people money to like watch the same content that they can already access for free you may have like cleaning channels which basically do like paywalls a bit like what meg's doing and so people can like watch her clean even though there's like tons of channels that are already facilitating this deep burning desire to watch people clean on youtube so whatever it is what it is we're gonna start off from the very beginning on the fact that their dog molly i think it's molly got there safely i know there was like a lot of hubbub and people have like dressed this brit has addressed this quite a few times there's quite a lot of hubbub going on with the dog the dog actually got there we managed to find a little clip see a little clip of the dog basically there dog is there safe and sound we don't need to worry until she gets back on the plane and whatever's going to be happening when they're away I was obviously like concerned because I have, I don't have a dog, but I've got a cat and I personally wouldn't put my cat on that long of an airplane flight. Like I have been over to the States to see my friend twice in the past like year and a bit. Uh, and it's long enough for me, let alone being trapped in like a little tiny cage in the belly of the plane. Like I can't really imagine it. At least us mere mortals can like get up and walk around as long as there's no turbulence. But an animal literally can't move and it must be absolutely terrifying because they've got no idea what's going on. I was wondering for such a long time, I think they're in Germany right now. I have been wondering for such a long time, how is Meg going to keep on doing the type of content that she normally does, i.e. cleaning, homemaking, all of that kind of shabaku, which is what loads of other people do. Um, I was wondering how is she going to be able to do that when she's got like Airbnbs or whatever. And we have previously learned that they're basically wanting to do, they're wanting to basically approach loads of Airbnbs and offer them, offer the Airbnb exposure in exchange for like a lower price or like free rent, which I already think is greedy enough as hell, but by the by. But I was wondering what kind of content is Meg going to be offering on her website? They're wanting to travel about and that I think they said like every two to three weeks they're wanting to just go somewhere else. If that is the case, then how is she going to be able just to like buy all this Christmas stuff? And then where, where is she going to put it? Is she just going to leave it there for the next group of people to have to source out? I don't know. I remember watching and I did discuss this. Maybe I could throw in a few clips. Meg was basically going out like sourcing like pumpkins. I don't know, like literally trekking into the wilderness to like source all of these different things to make like fall decor, which I thought was quite cool. I think that's a way better alternative than just buying loads of like, because it's tat. Okay, I love tat. I adore tat. If you give me, send me into a Christmas shop, I will get the tat. I can't afford the tat right now, but I want it. And if I could afford it, I would get it. So I do understand. I'm a lot more mindful nowadays on like, obviously save the planet. Don't just buy loads of like random plastic and even wooden stuff to a certain extent, because unless you're going to keep it forever, like, I don't know, everything just gets cluttered with the, with the different season, seasoning, seasoning, seasons and changes. I was wondering what is she going to be doing with this stuff? And because she, she showed a clip a little while ago of her like sourcing things organically, I thought, you know what, that's a really good idea. However, fast forward to now and she's like going through the Christmas shops being like, oh, that's so pretty. And don't get me wrong, I would do that as well. But at the same time, I'm not bopping around, like changing location every two weeks. I don't know what she's doing with this Christmas stuff. Do we think she's just going to leave it there for the owners to have to sort out? Because at the end of the day, everyone's style is so subjective. This might be nitpicky as hell and I'm sorry but I would just saw the stories and this is just what came to mind but everyone's style is so different especially when it comes to decorating I know there's obviously like an overall aesthetic which is like quite farmhousey right now that's quite trendy it might have moved on I've got no bloody idea the point is is that the homeowners may not appreciate having loads of like 
Santa figurines just like scattered around the house or like whatever. And I do appreciate that she's wanting to try and like, to, to, to try and keep some of her old content. But when she's going off about, oh, I just want to strip away everything. I don't want to be carrying anything around. I'm going to be non-materialistic or in such words, a much more minimalistic. I think that was it. I think that those were her, her exact words. Lifestyle. I appreciate that, Meg. I hear you. But the thing is, you're then just like going around. You've sold all your Christmas stuff. You're not going around buying more Christmas stuff just to like put into other people's homes. I wouldn't say that's living like a you know, a minimalistic lifestyle. If you're not being minim minimalistic, you're just leaving your stuff just like scattered around, but whatever, she might not, she might completely surprise me, but I would be, I, I am a bit suspicious about what the hell she's planning on doing with like all of this stuff. I've got no idea. In America, you get out of the vehicle and you pump your own gas. And it's kind of like the chivalrous thing to do, at least the way I was raised for the man to get out and pump the gas. Hold it right there, hold it right there. No one has ever, ever gotten out of my car to pump to pump my gas never you know what i actually feel like powerful as hell when i've managed to go into into a little slot and actually i've then got to basically lift the whole pipe all the way over my car to get to the other side of it you, do you know what i mean i'm trying to explain this but either way nah does it, are, are other people like this as well no one's ever pumped my gas for me ever i think if anyone was like hey i'll do it for you i'd be like what what's going on over here what's going on it like not not in my car i wouldn't get him i wouldn't shove a man out the car and be like hey stand there and pump my gas i don't know it's weird do you guys think like that as well so every time we get to a gas station here i get out to pump but it's a full service station. So there's an attendant there pumping the gas for me. And I end up just standing there kind of weird because I don't want to get back in the car and be rude. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Do you get out of the car at a full service station and stand there awkwardly? Or do you stay in the car and just give them the card when you're done? And do you tip the attendant after they pump your gas? So I was watching his stories and he was saying how they have in like Italy and stuff. I've never been to Italy. They have like self-service like uh, fuel stations, gas stations, and um, he was getting ultra confused because he wasn't sure whether or not he should stand outside the car, sit in the car, give them like a tip or whatever. And I have a feeling that this kind of content is going to be so unbelievably prevalent here in the UK. And I can't obviously if you have like a nice meal, this is just this is just me. And other UK residents may just be like, oh my god, like don't you tip someone randomly? The thing is, is that. If you go out to like a nice restaurant, go and get something to eat, I'm talking for the UK only, or like England, whatever. You have a nice meal, put down a tip, blah, blah, blah. But generally, if someone like, you don't tend to like tip your server, like waitresses and stuff don't really like tend to work for tips. So you don't tip everyone you come across. The only times I ever really tip anyone is if I've had a really nice meal and then I then tip. Tipping's not so much of a big thing over here because a lot of people don't work for tips. For instance, I remember, in fact, in every single place I've ever worked, there was this magical tip jar. Did I see any of that money? No. I once had at this um, tapas restaurant I was working, not naming any names, I remember there was supposed to be a tipping system, um, but it all went into this like pot and the I was apparently I was quite a good waitress that evening just like went oh thank you thank you da, da, da. and they then basically just like handed me um like 20 pounds like a 20 pound note and I was just like oh thank you he's like oh it's for you it's for you to put into your tips and I was like ah and the only literally was stood right behind me and just took it and was like oh that goes in the jar did I ever see that money no, never saw that money. And that was quite prevalent amongst a lot of the other people that I worked with. Um, so I don't know whether or not we just have some really like cranky restaurant managers or what, but that is my experience of tipping in the UK, especially when you work in like hospitality. I fully believe that traveling is one of the most rewarding and life-changing experiences that you can have. So Justin has got this brand new thing and I'm reading it off my computer screen. So if you see me do this, it's because I'm looking down. Justin planned it, travel school course materials designed to get you traveling with confidence. I, I get it. Anyone can become like, anyone can become a traveling expert if you're like really into traveling. I do appreciate that. I will say that I don't know a lot of people that are traveling right now because everything is super expensive. So just my own personal thoughts and opinions. 
I feel like they may have missed the boat slightly with this, but whatever, I could be wrong. I firmly believe that travel is a life-changing activity. I also know that so many people want to get out there and see the world, but they don't know where to begin when it comes to planning and booking the trip. Also, people can't afford it, so that might be a much bigger, that might, that might actually be a much more of a bigger issue for you. I've designed this course with a beginner in mind. As an avid traveller and a travel planner, I have my own set of tips and tricks that I use when booking my own family's travel, as well as trips for my clients. Who are the clients? Are you a client? I really want to hear, I really want to hear about his client's feedback, to be honest. About to give you all of these basics, upon completion of this course, you will have the confidence, the knowledge, and the ability to book your dream vacation. Hmm. Okay, so well, at least, at least, at least, at least, at least Justin has an idea. After reading his website, I'm like, aha, uh -huh, okay, if I was into traveling, I suppose I can understand. Whereas if I read Meg's, I still have no idea what the hell she's going to teach me for being like, a, I don't know what an abundant mindset is. I've got no idea. Honestly, if you read the two websites, at least with him, I can sort of understand. He's, he's got a vision. Whereas Meg's, and this isn't me, I don't mean to be mean. It's just that with hers, I don't really understand what she's going to be giving me on her course, if that makes any sense. We have the example curriculum. <laughs> the curriculum. How to book your dream vacation. Uh... The location, selecting flight, booking accommodations, all the extras, bubbity bubbity bubba. And they're all like uh, 7 minute 56, 5 minute 56, 10 minute 21, blah, blah. What I will say is that you can literally find these things for free in, a, in lit literal abundance all over YouTube. So I'm not sure why someone would scout this out because they probably had to pay to put this website up didn't they so a one-time purchase is 23.99 so enroll now i have no idea i i'm assuming a one-time purchase so you put 23 dollars down and then you then access all of that stuff which i suppose like is that reasonable i suppose but will we have anything else added on to this thing i really don't understand how it works and to be honest with you i really don't want to click enroll now because I think it just takes me straight to a payment screen. The main, the main issue that that I take with it is that I'm just not sure that going around Europe a few times, I think that's where they've gone in the past, qu qualifies you to know absolutely everything about traveling. But then I do understand there are literal travel agents that don't really go traveling themselves. I feel like it's a bit of a gray area because if you want to be a, like a traveling agent and you want to be able to advise people on booking, da -da -da, what happens if people are asking you? hey can you please help me book flights to like india i don't know to somewhere somewhere completely different completely separate like other side of the world and they have absolutely zero experience with any of these things like how can you really recommend it i don't really understand no idea how it works i wouldn't personally go to a travel agent just because just because i just feel like it's an extra added amount of money and i don't really see the benefits of it especially when you can find out all of this information for free or you can literally like just go into one of those like little travel agent shop thingies and you can literally have like a free consultation with them do you know what i mean like you can literally talk to them face to face and be like hey this is where i want to go and even if you don't end up booking that trip they can still give you additional information also that i've heard so i'm not entirely sure why where is the why there's always a why and i don't get it they, they both just have too many ideas are just booming and too many different causes that are going on and i just i just i just don't understand it also there is the elephant in the room no one has any money and i say this all the time i've said this about every single one of their ventures nobody has any money and i don't think they realize just how little amounts of money anyone has at the end of the month i'm lucky if i can literally buy a pint of milk Okay, so I just don't, and I'm not in the minority here. Like most people I speak to are like, yeah, we're literally living like paycheck to paycheck. Who has the kind of money at the minute just to be like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna go away and pay Meg and Justin to help sort out my travel worries. Like, I think you're just talking to a very like, and there is blatantly a market. You're just talking to a very niche market, but maybe not the types of people that would watch like homemaking and cleaning on a budget videos if that makes any sense because meg has like set herself up as being this sort of like stripping herself of all of her things and being much more minimalistic whereas they're also asking people for like an extortionate amount of money so i'm just not quite i i just don't understand how those two things can coincide but they, that, that's just my own thoughts and opinion anyway thank you so much for watching i do i am well aware that this has probably been quite rambly i just saw it i'm gonna be completely honest i haven't really been seeing that much stuff on youtube that's really 
like tickled my my commentary fancy so this was the very very first thing i was just a bit like ha really okay i'll do a little update but like i don't know what it is i don't know i i feel like i feel like there's like there's been stuff to talk about on youtube for sure but i just feel like there's been a lot less stuff to talk about on youtube than there has in a little while i think everyone's in hiding because it's like the christmas holidays everyone's like no i don't need any drama in my life today so who knows what's really going thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world take care of each other take care of yourselves and i will catch up with you guys in the next video